Hi, I'm John Mayfield, the real estate tech guy with another Global Real Estate School podcast. Hey, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for joining. My name is John Mayfield, the real estate tech guy, and I have five vocabulary definitions that I really think you will probably see on your real estate examination. So whether you take your exam tomorrow or this week, watch this video because I'm going to give you five definitions that you will probably see on the real estate examination. And I'm going to help you get at least those five questions right. And hey, every question counts, right? So let's get right into the video because I don't want to waste any time whatsoever. And the very first definition I want you to know about is called chattel. It's called chattel. I'm, hey, I'm using my I'm using my digital flashcards. I'm going to put that up so you can see the next button down there. But uh, these are digital digital flashcards that you can download to your iPhone or your Android or your computer, and you can study and prepare for the exam. Now, I like them to put them on my phone because that way, when you have some free time at work or lunch or wherever you are, you can just jump right on your phone and you just touch the screen. And when you touch the screen, you're going to see this right here happen. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So what is chattel? Here's what I think you need to know for the real estate examination regarding chattel. It's personal property, but they like to throw these weird saw, uh, hardball questions out from the left. <laughs> you know, it's like, where did that question come from? A lease is an example of personal property. It's chattel, chattel real, we call that. Chattel personal is anything that's movable. But chattel is also personal property, and we know that personal property is movable. So uh, the lease comes in kind of from left field, as I said, and it's one of those things that the item writer, you know, digs through a book and they're like, oh, yeah, I wonder if they'll also know that a lease is an example of chattel or personal property. So there you have it. You're not going to miss that on the exam, are you? Chattel is what? It's personal property and personal property is anything that's movable. And a lease would be an example of chattel. So don't forget that or miss that question. Now, the next question that I think you need to know for the real estate exam. And you can see these digital flashcards. There's a ton of questions there. And so you'll be able to learn these and do very well. Don't forget, you can order those from globalrealestateschool.com. Just go there, look for our digital flashcards. Once you buy it, you'll get a link, download it to your phone, you are good to go. And so our next definition you need to know is called a trade fixture. Now, a trade fixture, here's what's important for you to understand about a trade fixture. A trade fixture is an article of personal property, but it's been affixed to leased premises. See that? Affixed to leased premises premises. Good example is any kind of a fast food restaurant or a convenience store where the premises are leased by the tenant. Well, all of those freezers and countertops and shelving and everything inside that, the gas pumps, if it's a convenience store with, with gas, those are all considered trade fixtures. They are fixtures installed by the tenant to help them do business with their establishment. And since they are trade fixtures, they are considered personal property. A trade fixture is considered personal property. And again, right here where it says at the termination of a lease, a tenant must leave 
most fixtures in the premises. However, trade fixtures are removable by the tenant. But the key here is prior to the expiration of the lease. I don't know if I was actually showing you that slide or not, but just understand this. A trade fixture is personal property and the tenant can, re can remove that prior to the expiration of the lease. If not, it becomes property of the landlord. I, I think you will see a question over trade fixtures and you just need to understand the tenant that is personal property. It's part of the tenants. They can remove it prior to the expiration of the lease. But if they don't get it out before the expiration of the lease, then unfortunately, that property will probably become property of the landlord. Okay, so don't forget that. Now, I'm going to pull up another um, definition that I think is important for you to to know. And these are kind of, sometimes these are kind of tough to remember, but the word dower. Now, they may not use this specific, specific term. They may use the other one. We're going to cover two for one here. But dower, the dower is, well, that is the legal right or interest that's recognized in some states that a wife acquires in the property her husband held or acquired any time during the marriage. Now, the other one I said it would be a two for one is this curtsy, and that's the interest that a husband owns in his wife's demise. So think of curtsy or courtesy as, you know, you were the husband and you're having this proper way to say, you know, that's the husband's interest, okay? Dower is the wife's. Now, how can you remember those or put two and two together? Well, I have a little tip here. Let's see if we can. So if you look at dower, D-O-W-E-R, look at there. there's a W there, isn't there? And when we look at the definition of dower, it's the wife's right. So dower, W, is the wife's right. Dower, W, wife. Courtesy or curtsy is the husband's. Now there's no H, unfortunately, here. But if you can remember the W in dower and wife, the W in wife, you could probably get those correct, okay? Now, you probably will see uh, a question about community property, community property. And remember that community property is any property that, um, and we have the definition right here, community property is any property that basically the spouse or both spouses acquired during the marriage, okay? So in a community property state, and not every state is a community property state, but we have what's called separate property. Separate property is property that is brought to the marriage by the spouses or inherited by one of the spouses during the marriage. So if you owned a Lamborghini and you and I were married and you brought the Lamborghini to the marriage and we didn't like each other and we got a divorce, you get to keep the Lamborghini in a community property state. Okay? <laughs> community property is anything you bring to the marriage or inherit during the marriage is yours. 
So the Lamborghini's yours. Why? Because you brought it to the marriage. Now, if you and I got married and we won the lottery and we went out and purchased a Lamborghini, that would be considered community property. Prior to that, and I hope I didn't say that incorrectly, prior to that, that Lamborghini was separate property. Separate property is what you bring to the marriage before you were married or inherited while you were married, okay? So that's separate property. So in that first example, that Lamborghini was separate. You brought it to the marriage. But in this last example where we, we got married, we won the lottery, we purchased a Lamborghini, now we want a divorce, that's community property and we're going to have to go to court and figure out, you know, who gets what. But uh, probably have to split that in two. But that is the example of community property. Now, the other question, and they love this question on the exam, and it's called a suit to partition. A suit to partition. What you normally will see are questions where um, people go together and buy something and then one of the parties wants to sell their property and the other party does not want to sell it. How do you, what do you do in that case? You have to go to court and do what's called a suit to partition and ask the court to do that. Now, on in my course, I always get questions from students that say, well, I thought tenants by the in, uh, tenants in common, you could have equal or unequal interest and you could sell your interest at any time. And, and they don't read the question carefully because the question says the people owned property as tenants in common. One of the people wanted to sell, but the others did not. And and the one who wanted to sell wanted to sell the entire property, not the not just their percentage. Well, in that case, you would have to do what is called a suit to partition, a suit to partition. So it's basically going to the court and asking the court. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Go back one here asking the court, you know, to terminate a joint tenancy, but tenancy by the entirety cannot be terminated by, let's see, did I do something wrong there? Go back one, suit to partition, there we go. So um, again, you may terminate a joint tenancy, but tenancy by the entirety cannot be terminated by a partition. However, and I'm glad we went back to that, because remember on my specific question I just told you, if you were wanting to sell the entire property, then you have to go to court and get what's called a suit to partition. They also love that question about somebody's building a garden or something over the property line or violating a restriction in a subdivision. What do you do? You go to court and you get an injunction to stop them. So suit to partition is just when you go to court and you say, hey, um, we'd like to terminate this partnership thing we have and we want the court to settle this up and allow us to, to partition and sell out our part or whatever. So shouldn't be too challenging if you read that. Just make sure you understand that you're probably going to see a question about suit to partition and also you get an injunction to stop that person from putting their garden in the property. Well, I think we covered five definitions. I didn't want to keep it too long, but chattel, personal property, a lease is an example of chattel. Trade fixtures, they're installed by the tenant. They're, it's considered, they are considered personal property can be removed at any time prior to the lease expiring by the tenant because it's personal property. If they don't remove it by that time, then it actually remains with the landlord or the owner. So there's two. We talked about dower. It's the wife's right 
when the husband dies because there's a W in dower and there's a W in wife, right? We also talked about curtsy or courtesy, and that's the husband's right. We talked about community property and separate property. You had that Lamborghini when you came and got married to me. You already owned it. It was separate property, right? You get to keep that. If you inherited that Lamborghini from your Uncle Ray who passed away, that would still be considered separate property in a community property state. Now, if you and I get married, we win the lottery and we go out and buy Lamborghini, that's considered personal or community property, okay? It's both of ours. We had too much personal property in there, didn't we? And then we also talked about, just finishing up here, the last definition was a suit to partition. And that's when you go to court and you want to terminate some type of a joint ownership. It could be a tenant in common, could be a joint tenancy. The question I have in my school is the tenant in common, they want to sell the entire property. And so you have to go to court and get a joint tenancy. And then I briefly said, hey, if you see a question where they're talking about a landlord, or not a landlord, but a landowner, there we go, who's building something over a property line or putting up a garden or a place, playground set, and you want them to stop because it's against the subdivision regulations or restrictions or the zoning, you have to go and get a court injunction, an injunction to stop them from doing that. So there you have it. Several questions you could see on the real estate exam. I pressed the wrong button there, but I wanted to tell you to be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel. would love to have you as a subscriber and uh, click on that bell. You'll be notified each and every time we go live. Also, uh, don't forget to go over to Global Real Estate School. We have some great tools. You just saw the flashcards in action. There's like 400, I'm just looking there. There's several hundred definitions that will help you. And there's only 100 questions on the national part of the exam. So, I mean, I got you covered if you want to pass a test. And we just covered, I know for sure you may see a few of those vocabulary definitions on the exam and you're going to get those right now so anyway thanks for watching the youtube channel tell others about global real estate school thanks for watching i want you to go out and make it a great day thank you for listening to the podcast for global real estate school i'm john mayfield the real estate tech guy go out and make it a great day